now let us resume <coughs> proteinuria hematuria these are the two common investigations as a clinician you will come across what is proteinuria more than 150 mg of protein within 24 hours defines the proteinuria there can be pathology in the glomerulus which can lead to proteinuria pathology in the tubule which can lead to proteinuria so why glomerular pathologies lead to proteinuria you know that there are food processes in the glomeruli which will decide the permeability of the proteins and there are uh, anionic charges which are there in the GBM glomerular basement membrane which prevent the migration of the protein which is also typically negatively charged any loss of those anionic charges of the GBM will predispose to the proteinuria both glomerular nephritis and also the nephrotic syndrome can lead to the development of proteinuria is what need to be remembered certain tubular pathologies small proteins which are normally filtered from the glomerulus are all reabsorbed tubule acts to retain the protein in certain scenarios when the tubule got damaged either due to ischemia or due to the drugs that uh, protein retention ability is gone which lead to proteinuria but generally a breach in the glomerulus lead to more significant proteinuria than a breach of the tubule is the most important thing to be appreciated now what lead to the tubular damage which can lead to tubular proteinuria typically where are the tubules located where are we say tubules where are they located renal medulla which is highly vulnerable to a sluggish blood flow and ischemic injury so if the patient is having sickle cell anemia that lead to the blood flow in the renal medulla become more sluggish and can lead to the development of tubular damage so tubular pathology tubular interstitial disease is a very common consequence of sickle cell nephropathy is what need to be remembered similarly any urinary tract obstruction or drug induced interstitial nephritis any of them can lead to the development of tubular proteinuria conditions like multiple myeloma where there is monoclonal gammopathy with excessive production of the light chains of the immunoglobulins can also lead to development of tubular proteinuria then any patient who has an UTI urinary tract infection or heavy exertion or stress or CHF or pregnancy and some people have orthostatic proteinuria whenever the patient is standing but not when recumbent he will have proteinuria there are the other important causes of uh, proteinuria because all these entities fever pregnancy orthostatic nature they will affect the renal plasma flow and in turn will have an impact on the protein loss into the urine now what is nephrotic syndrome you all know very well that urinary protein more than 3.5 in 24 hours plasma protein less than 2 and uh, presence of the edema and hyperaldosteronism why because in nephrotic syndrome the intravascular fluid goes into the edema intravascular fluid uh, when it is diminished renal plasma flow diminishes releases angio uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone lead to hyperaldosteronism then they also have hyperlipidemia and lipiduria why because you have a lot of apolipoproteins which are required for the synthesis of lipoproteins for example LDL VLDL you require B100 APOA 48 etc if there is a proteinuria even this EPO proteins required for lipoprotein formation are also lost if there is no lipoprotein if there is no LDL what will happen if LDL cannot form cholesterol transference get affected hence there will be development of hypertriglyceridemia hypercholesterolemia and hyperlipidemic state will be there they have a hypercoagulable state why 
because we said no protein c protein s yes, they are the natural anti thrombotic proteins available in our blood god gifted anti thrombotic features they belong to the opposition party who is the ruling party factor 2 factor 5 factor 7 all clotting factors are one party protein c protein s then other party in the proteinuric phase people lose even their protein c protein s if the anti thrombotic factors are lost into urine what will happen to the patient it will predispose to pro thrombotic state typically suddenly a patient of nephrotic syndrome develops severe headache what is the reason because the central sinus venous thrombosis developed a patient of nephrotic syndrome suddenly develops a worsening ascites with a severe abdominal pain what is the reason because hepatic vein thrombosis with butcheri syndrome has developed a patient of nephrotic syndrome suddenly will start hematocagia severe abdominal pain because mesenteric vascular thrombosis has developed leading to ischemic necrosis of the bowel so these are all the consequences of the hypercoagulability in the patients of uh, nephrotic syndrome is what need to be remembered since immunoglobulins are lost into urine there is a tendency for infection now what are the main causes of proteinuria any glomerular pathologies primary glomerular pathologies in the case of the adults membranous glomerulopathy in the case of children minimal change disease leading to nephrotic syndrome there is one more entity called fsgs focal segmental glomerulosclerosis can lead to development of proteinuria looking at the amount of proteinuria can you be able to get some clue definitely suppose if it is nephrotic syndrome due to minimal change disease you will have proteinuria but proteinuria will be maximum 2 grams or 3 grams per day not 8 grams or 10 grams if proteinuria is so severe 8 grams 10 grams 12 grams protein is lost in some people you should do a renal biopsy because it can't be explained by a simple minimal change disease or membranous nephropathy focal segmental glomerulosclerosis is known to lead to such a very high levels of proteinuria is what need to be remembered but otherwise membranous nephropathy or minimal change disease there is a proteinuria of nephrotic range but never more than 3 to 4 grams per day is what need to be ultimately remembered similarly diabetes sle rheumatoid arthritis hs purpura polyarthritis nodosa vaginus all these connective tissue disorders can lead to the development of proteinuria similarly amyloidosis cryoglobulinemia certain drugs which can injure the tubule which include captopril among ACE inhibitors enzymes penicillin any bacterial viral infection or multiple myeloma malignant hypertension or if you transplant it transplant rejection presence in the form of proteinuria is what you have to ultimately remember so what are the three key features of nephrotic syndrome doctor proteinuria hyperlipidemia and hypoalbuminemia need to be remembered now whenever you do the analysis of the urine what is the right way of collecting the urine sample it's called a clean catch midstream urine sample the patient passes urine in the middle of the urine you catch not the terminal nor the initial sample is the one which need to be basically collected look at the urine that gives a lot of clues if there are a lot of bubbles and foamy urine if it is there it is a very important indication of proteinuria if the urine is coca cola colored smoky color it is an indication of hematuria look for any clots so gross appearance is very important then ph normally is between 4.5 to 8 specific gravity is between 1002 to 1.035 and uh, suppose if the tubules are damaged what will happen to specific gravity normally if we are dehydrated we produce concentrated urine if we are overhydrated we produce 
diluted urine. But if the tubules are dysfunctional, whether you are dehydrated or overhydrated, you produce the same level specific gravity. Isosthenuria is an important indicator of tubular dysfunction is what need to be remembered. Now, how do you define proteinuria basically? More than 150 mg per day. But every guy who has 600 mg or 700 mg cannot be called a nephrotic syndrome guy. So nephrotic syndrome is defined when the proteinuria is more than 3.5 grams per day is what you need to remember. Now whenever you do protein dipstick test, what if I mean dipstick? Urine sample collected in that you have got a dipstick available, you will put it and then take out and see how much plus 1 plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, the plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 of the dipstick corresponds to what level of the quantitative value doctor? You call it as trace on a dipstick if the protein urea is between 50 to 150. That 1 plus color coding will come if the loss is 150 to 500. If it is 0 0.5 to 1.5, 2 plus will come, 2 to 5 grams per day you get 3 plus and uh, more than 5 grams per day you get 4 plus. So that is the correlation between quantitative loss of proteinuria versus that of the color coding on the protein dipstick is what you need to remember. Then look for glucose, look for blood, look for ketones, nitrates and uh, leukocyte esterase levels. What is the importance of it? If you are suspecting UTI in a patient or pyelonephritis then the leukocyte esterase levels will be typically elevated in the urine sample is what need to be understood. Look for cars, look for bacteria and look for crystals. So that's all the story of how you examine a urine sample. Now some people they are totally asymptomatic but on urine examination found to have proteinuria. A symptomatic transient proteinuria does not require further evaluation and it carries a excellent prognosis. Now doctor, if you do the dipstick, dipstick tests which are specific not for total urinary protein but even for albumin also they are available. So a dipstick can be able to detect if the albuminuria is more than 30 grams per deciliter or higher, it is called as 1 plus if the albuminuria is between 15 to 30 milligrams per deciliter and it is more than 500 mg per deciliter if the albuminuria then it will show 4 plus color coding positive in case of the dipstick. See you have got uh, the uh, different colors right. So there is one, one is for sugar, other is for protein, another is for like that you have different uh, parameters available, one for uh, blood etc. So the one which is meant for albumin, you must look after dipping in the urine sample, is it uh, matching the color of 2 plus, 1 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus. And according to that color change, you will decide how much proteinuria is there, that is all the story.